Okay, in this video, I'm going to take apart a, um, what is this, a Virginian Dragoon. I think it's a, uh, maybe a m Type 2, I can't remember, but it's a 44 Magnum. Um, it's a pretty simple takedown. I'm just going to completely strip it, and uh, this gun is going to be Cerakoted. It's already been blued twice in its life, and uh, still doesn't look very good, so... Um, there's not a whole lot to really explain. It's very simple takedown. So I'm just going to kind of tear it apart and uh, let you watch. So there's our grip screw. And this gun has some Packmire, uh, they call them presentation grips. They actually go over this whole part. Um, factory grips only are sides side scales which I like a whole lot better so probably won't be reusing this you're gonna need a couple um, pretty simple tools for this a paper clip is one of them the only tool that you need that uh, you might not have is um, this little bit here I can't remember what it's called Call like a spanner bit or a forked bit. It's for Smith & Wesson sites uh, a lot of times, but we're going to need this. You don't have to have it, but it will definitely help. Um, so we've got the grip off. Go ahead and take the cylinder out. We're already at half cock. So we'll uh, push this button in on this side. Pull that rod forward. Cylinder slides out. There's nothing to take apart here on the cylinder. That's just it. So we'll set that off to the side, and then we can take out the uh, projection rod tube here, a little housing. There's one oddly shaped screw, and the housing will uh, kind of wobble off there. So you push this forward, and sideways and you have three pieces. You have the ejection rod itself, which does not come apart. It was uh, pressed in from the factory. This rod was pressed into this handle, so technically it is actually replaceable, uh, but it doesn't need to come apart. For the spring and the housing. There's nothing else in here. That's it by itself. Uh, then we can pull this out the rest of the way. There is a little uh, clip around here. Sometimes that may come off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take mine off here in a little bit because this is going off to Cerakote. Um, next up, we're going to use that special little spanner-shaped um, bit here and put it on the back side because um, we need to use it over here. So we're going to use this to keep it still and then just use a screwdriver on the other side to take this apart. Once you break it loose, you can just hold it like this and then spin this flathead screw out. If you don't have this special bit, um, you can just grab this with some pliers and a rag over it to uh, help keep the finish from getting damaged. There should be three parts that come out here. We have the uh, flathead screw shaped piece on the right side of the gun and then a uh, spring inside of the left hand piece. I'm going to take the spring out of here in a little bit because this is going to be Cerakoted. We'll put that off to the side. Um, now that we've got this apart, let's go ahead and take out the uh, hammer strut and spring assembly. So we're going to take the hammer back to full cock and get a paper clip and insert the paper clip into the hole in the back here. Um, then you can uh, pull the trigger, push the hammer forward with the trigger pulled, and this whole um, assembly will come out. The hammer strut and spring and the keeper. There are three components here. You have to kind of wiggle them and get them to come out just right. There we go. These pieces are going to stay like this. They will not be Cerakoted. All right, next up, uh, we'll go ahead and remove the rear sight. The front sight does not drift or move or come off in any way. Uh, 16th punch is what you're going to need. Um, you'll want to have a punch kind of like this, but maybe cut off right here. Um, so you've got uh, a stronger punch that won't bend to get this thing started. Unfortunately, this one is pretty loose, so it just pushes out. Um, it's not supposed to do that, but that's what this one does. 
I will probably knurl this pin before putting it back in. That way uh, it is not so loose. I may have to tap it out. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Still too loose. I mean, shouldn't be that loose. It's actually got a little bit of a bend to it. So I may replace this. Put that off to the side and we can remove the uh, rear sight assembly. Go ahead and uh, turn this top screw here. Loosen it up, take it out. Now you're going to have two screw, two screw, uh, sorry, springs. Turn this over so you can see. One spring in the front, which is a longer spring, or sorry, one spring in the back, which is a longer spring, and one spring in the front, which is a shorter spring. Um, there you go. Need to take the springs out and remember what order they go in. Um, these parts will be Cerakoted, so I'm going to take apart uh, the rear sight as well. Let's see if this screwdriver works in there. Nope. I'll have to get a smaller one. Pretty much can take this whole gun apart. Um, just flathead bits. Turn this one until it comes out completely. There we go. So I took the screw out this way, and then here's the rear sight blade. It rocks in like this. Okay, it rocks in like that because there's a little tiny spring in here. Uh, I'm going to see if I can. There we go. If it'll come out, and it does. So here's the spring. It has a tightly wound spot on the right. This is the orientation that it goes in. Just like that. Uh, I need to keep these bits together. Looks like this one has been uh, painted before. There's definitely some kind of paint flake it off. Um, yep. All right. So we've got the rear sight assembly taken apart, and that assembly consists of three springs, a pin, a grub screw, flathead screw, rear sight blade, and the rear sight uh, itself. Um, next up, we'll go ahead and take off the trigger guard and uh, grip here. Hollow ground screwdrivers are going to be your friend. Um, really advise getting a set of those for this kind of thing. These screws are all really loose, um, so it's not a big deal for me, but yours may be an issue, so you don't want to strip these things. You've got two longer screws here that go right there, and then one shorter screw that goes up in the front, and then we've got two screws here at the back. The two screws here at the back are the same length as the longer screws from the bottom. There will be a spring back here. It's not going to fly out or anything, but just be aware that you may drop it. Okay, so we'll go down and out, and then I'll turn it over. And you'll be able to see that spring. See that spring right there. All right, the frame is now stripped. There is nothing else that will come off the frame, so we can put it to the side these screws to the side and we just have this uh, upper assembly here um, this spring is for the paw inside which you probably can't see but it rides up and down in there it's a very simple gun it's a spring for it Let's see if we can get it out there's our spring and our detent the spring has a little kink to it we may uh, may have to replace that. So it is now out. Um, we can take out the screw here on the bottom and this is the tensioning screw for the hand or sorry for the um, oh gosh what is the name of that part? 
it's gonna kill me. I'll think of it here in a minute. Uh, the lock, pretty much. The part that pops up here and locks into the cylinder. Um, so we'll take out that screw and we have a spring. The spring is uh, has two leaves to it. It also puts tension on the um, on the trigger. So both of these, uh, the trigger is riding on a screw and also the uh, lock is riding on a separate screw. There's also uh, a screw down here inside the frame that is the tension um, on the gate. So we can go ahead and take that apart. This is one part that you're going to want to lock tight when you put it back together. Especially if your gun is really uh, nice and oiled up, this screw will back out all the time under recoil. Um, there we go. Spring and the detent is just a little, little metal cylinder. The spring is not in very good shape. Looks like somebody has uh, tightened that screw down way too hard and uh, probably damaged it. So, and there is the gate. All right, on this left-hand side, we'll start with the hammer. So that one is a little bit tight. Move up to the next sides. I love to use these bits with a very small little uh, wrench. This one has a ratcheting side also, which is just a lifesaver when you're doing stuff like this, when you've got very small things that are very tight. It's a lot better than uh, screwdriver. Okay, there's that. And our hammer and the paw or the hand. So this is how it looks just like this. Take a look inside there. Shouldn't be anything else. There's no gunk or anything. Alright, now for the hammer, this piece does not need to be Cerakoted. The hand or the paw, so it'll come off. Put it to the side. Um, and then the part that the hammer strut rides on, which is right here, we'll have to compress it and then push out this pin. Either way, you don't have to punch it out, just push it out. So we can get these components out because we don't need to seracote these, just this. So we'll take all these, put them off to the side. Then we have our bare hammer. And next up, let's see if we got the right size. Nope, we're going to go down to a 3 16 And we're going to take out the uh, screw or the pin for the trigger first. Oh man, that thing is really tight. Let's try the other one. May have to step up. Can to the next size. No. Nope. All right. Let's try again. There we go. So we got that one broken loose. Let's try to do the next one. Those are really tight. They would have definitely uh, gotten damaged from a regular screwdriver. Okay, then we have the trigger and the screw for it. Take out the next one. There we go. This piece is what locks up inside here. It's a very commonly worn part. Either the cylinder will wear on a softer cylinder, or this piece can wear. And these are really hard to find. All right, so we've, we're almost done. Um, the next part that we have to take out is the last part, and that is the firing pin. So I don't think I have the right uh, bit to take out the firing pin keeper. 
So um, I think I'm going to try to use a punch and see if I can spin it around. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so right here is the firing pin keeper. This needs to come out. It needs to be spun and come out forward. See, there's the little firing pin inside there, and there's also a spring. So um, let's see if it'll come out this way. If not, I may have to make a little tool. Take it, take this apart. Nope, there we go, it's working. So all I'm doing is just putting the punch in the, one of the holes and uh, tapping it with a hammer. Got lucky here that this one isn't all seized up. Could definitely have a lot of carbon build up around here. Probably wouldn't hurt to get some penetrating fluid and uh, kind of soak this part. While this is out, I'll probably go ahead and make a tool for it. So that way when I'm putting it in, I don't have to do this. And then I won't need to do this ever again. So this is just a little bit at a time. Kind of picking my angles. Should be getting pretty close to coming out. Yeah, there we go. Let me see if I can get this in the camera. Man, the lighting really isn't the best. I just put a new light in here with a diffuser and it is not the right color at all. I was pretty disappointed. I set it up specifically to get this on camera and it kind of went the opposite way. So. I have to go buy some different bulbs. Alright, so there's this piece here. And it is quite rusty. We'll push the firing pin out through there. And there is the firing pin. Firing pin and spring. It is just disgusting. It is, uh, it is very gross. So we'll set that off to the side. And um, there we go. That is it. Completely stripped and ready for Cerakote. Let me uh, move the camera over this way so you can get a good look at all the parts in case you're missing something. And you should be able to rewind back to the video and uh, take a look at how all these parts go in. So here you have the rear sight assembly. Um, that's the only kind of jumbled uh, spot right there. Everything else is in its own place. So there you go. I hope that video um, helped you guys out if you have one of these and you need to take it apart. At least it'll give you something to kind of, uh, you know, pause and play when you go to put it back together. Um, if you forget what size spring goes where. So, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.